So we have some huge news from the patch today. Do not update your game. Trade up. There's going to be something in this video. Spreadsheet. Check it out. I got hosed by it. Is what it is. People were smart and they waited. So check, check that out. We're going to check out the patch notes updates. Is there anything that got really nerfed or buffed? Is it worth spending an amount of gold to get 2,000 tokens per week? That's one of the adjustments they made. We'll go over that as well. First read, first reaction. Uh, Spotlight cash is a new feature, new way to acquire newly released cards. Series four, series five, system will appear after you've passed collection level 500. These, we knew this. Spotlight cash will replace collector caches and collector reserves every 120 level or 120 collection levels. We know that it means in every 10 collector reserves, a spotlight cash will show up. Read more in the general spotlight blog. General updates, premium mystery variants, a new mystery variant type that only offers rare or super rare variants and cannot contain pixel variants now available in the daily offer section of the shop for 800 gold that's actually really cool i like that so that way you're not forced to get pixels or there's going to be more options there daily offer rewards when you make 10 purchases in the daily offer shop you will now be rewarded with a bonus 2000 collector tokens and one premium mystery variant claimable once per week wow wow that's interesting got to do some math on that to see what the value is there but needing uh collector tokens that's obviously a way to do that this is probably incentivizing people to make gold purchases and doing this once per week i'm guessing this is going to make sense to do but we'll see so we definitely want to show some of this stuff that we talked about it's got in game this 2k for every nine you think about this let's just say you you buy the cheapest one right so 700 you're obviously quick math there's 7,000 gold essentially that's 91 dollars a week so if you want to spend 91 dollars to get 2k tokens that's what you're looking at there the old economy had 2,000 tokens cost around $59. Now everything's changing, but uh, this seems a bit off for me. I mean, you're getting variants, so I guess that makes sense. I mean, is that a value of an additional 20, 30 bucks? One other thing that they're not noted, they didn't mention here is they've adjusted the credit levels in the credit spots. This didn't used to be this much. Audio and art, new visual and sound effects for following. Shuri, this I'm hoping is the location that you need to play your card because sometimes it's not necessarily intuitive if locations move, etc. Infinite, that's interesting. Sabertooth and Agent 13, we'll see what that is. Balance updates, other than high evolutionary overperforming and being a bit too popular for its own good, we don't have a lot of pressing issues to address wow so we'll see the, no bounce addressing at all in the meta game at this time so maybe bounce isn't as good as everybody claims many of these changes are to improve clarity and expectations surrounding cards that have unusual interactions all right high evolutionary for the last month high evolve has proven itself strong enough to support three distinct decks within the meta game some are better than others and none of the three are explicitly problematic in rank play on any of our metrics but we think there's still room to improve diversity at the top of the metagame so i think this is really about them just wanting to make sure that it's not a set top deck they like to have as much diversity in people's collections in the metagame as possible i think that's sort of speaking to that point even if high evolutionary deck is different even if each high evolutionary deck is different it can feel monotonous to get paired against them in succession to that end we're shaving some of the power of the two most played cards in the kit wasp and hulk i'm guessing so evolve wasp chains from afflect two enemy random cards with negative one afflect a random enemy so this is exactly what we said in the otas instead of two it's now one developer note pretty simple wasp is too good wasp is specifically fantastic in conjunction with lockjaw and jane foster playing more like a plus four bonus on two lockjaw rolls than just a zero three which makes sense however she's also winning more cubes overall than any other high evolutionary card not surprised there so we're weakening her to a meaningful impact all across the decks now the Hulk one I'm interested in. I think the Wasp one, not much comment there. It makes sense to do that. Uh, I think they hit the nail on the head. So Hulk went from plus two to when you end a turn with unspent energy, plus two power, if in hand or in play. Okay, so this is interesting. So they left the plus two power, but you only get it if you've played it on the field or it's actually currently in your hand as opposed to sitting back behind where you are. So it's not ongoing anymore. And if you notice that, I mean, it's not here. So that means any rogue steals, any enchantresses, that's not going to bring that down anymore. 
so it's no longer ongoing it's going to straight up increase the power if it's in your hand or on the board so uh the developers note here similarly hulk appears in every high evolutionary shell we've been monitoring and hulk's strongest there is even given the unfortunate bug that doesn't count the last turn of the game which is very true should you happen to have an energy to spare this adjustment will remove that issue and also reduce the average power of hulk especially in lockjaw shells where players could often accumulate energy without ever drawing hulk at all I, you know look i think this is a pretty smart change i think it makes sense to me i was thinking more of a cap on hulk but i think this in itself is sort of that cap where you're not going to necessarily build this giant hulk you've got to have the hulk in hand to get the benefit here i think it makes sense all right so next they have gambit oh, oh my gosh all right let's see what this does because i already thought gambit was pretty strong you listen when we're going to get all these on reveals happening here real soon with you got the echoes etc where you're not going to be able to counter your wongs so gambit's going to start showing up where it's going to be your echo your wong your mystique and your gambit where you clear your opponent's board so them buffing gambit right now is going to be interesting though i see mystique's name below so we'll see what's there all right so they've buffed the power here to three three the, the reveal does the exact same thing now must discard a card to destroy anything though so that's interesting so okay so i'm happy that they added that because it alludes to the problem that i was discussing if they buff this card because if you're not discarding you could still clear out the board so this is sort of a buff but also a little bit of a nerf at the same time for some time now pliers have noted a confusing dissonance between gamut's effect destroying cards whether you discard a card or not while armin zola must destroy his target in order to create copies of it in addition to being inconsistent gamut's creative concept is throwing cards at your enemies if you have no cards to throw why would you throw why would it work since this is a nerf and gamut's not a highly played card we're compensating him for that loss with a plus two power the Wong combo decks will suffer a bit and perhaps need to start including something like Apocalypse or Swarm if they want to blow up the board. However, using Gabbit in more traditional decks might be an interesting option. They play to exactly what you're going to want to use Apocalypse if you still want to pull off that Wong sort of non-stop destroy but you're gonna obviously have to have apoc in hand the plus two as far as a buff to counteract eh, i don't know i think that's sort of weak but we'll see all right so mystique new gameplay change now triggers on reveals if the copied ongoing card had one no text change okay so if there was any sort of on reveal so maybe with mystique if you're going to copy say rogue it'll trigger that and you can actually put that in a spot where you could say it's going to trigger it's not just going to copy whatever the rogue did it's going to maybe if there's two dark hawks or two di double dinos you can actually steal the other card that the rogue didn't hit so if rogues in one spot and you can play mystique and there's an, an additional card to steal mystique will now be able to do that let's see what they say here similarly this is a change that better line up players intuitions with outcomes whenever a card in our game copies an ability it implicitly copies the whole text box when absorbing man copies a card with an on reveal and an ongoing ability like soulstone or electro he gets both immediately but when mystique does she gets the on reveal ability without triggering it even though she was just played like absorbing man this doesn't come off often but we consider it a quality of life improvement we'll also make this adjustment to rogue just trying it here first so that's interesting so that's good so i'm hoping what that means is when rogue gets copied that she actually doesn't just copy her original self she actually still does on reels but i'm not sure that's what they're saying all right nakia now this is one we've actually mentioned i'm glad they're doing this and it's similar to what we mentioned i don't remember if we had the plus one but it's upgrading it to a three three and giving all, all oh wow so give the two leftmost cards two power now it's three three and it gives all cards in your hand plus one power this makes her a little bit more playable this is interesting nakia has been underperforming for a while now a far cry from her days of dominance during the game's beta period in addition her effect was a little complex especially for a card debuting in series two we're trying to address both of these issues with this change making Nakia a stronger simpler card to play with maybe she finds a new home in the competitive meta game maybe not time will tell i don't know if she'll be in the competitive meta game but i definitely like what they're doing here i think it's very interesting she could certainly show up is it gonna be great i think like they said time will tell i can't say that this card jumps out at me saying oh i gotta have this card just from sort of a first take text only updates uh let's see so black bolt your opponent must discard the lowest card in their hand it uh, updates to discard the lowest cars cad from your opponent's hand all right that seems fine there's an unresolved inconsistency present in the text with the word cost all right i think that's fine black cat old if this is in your hand at the end of your turn discard it new if the if you end the turn with this in your hand discard it okay you know what's interesting here 
I've gotten Black Cat from a location before, and it's like, well, it's been after I've been able to already play, and I'm like, I can't play this, and it just discards. I'm like, all right, well, that was pointless. I didn't get any advantage there. So I'm hoping that plays into that. We'll see. Bucky's adjustment. Let's see. Uh, create the uh, Winter Soldier in his place. They're saying replace it with the Winter Soldier. I'm assuming that has something to do with cards in the future. We'll see. Cerebro, let's see. Ongoing. Get plus two power. Now they're saying have plus two power. I think it's just standard language. Doctor Strange, move your highest power cards to this location. Unreveal your highest power card slash cards. All right. So I, it's just saying it could be one, it could be multiple. Uh, Craven, when a card moves here, he gets plus two power. When a card moves here, this gains plus two. Again, just have gains. Then they've got a bunch of bug fixes here. I've gone through these and just read them. Nothing sort of crazy. Some matchmaking issues with Conquest, some Conquest UI type issues. Weekly spotlight card purchased more than once. I think that's a problem where it keeps showing up for you. They're fixing that. Fix an issue with Mystery Series 3 card purchases if you've collected all three all series three cards this one is interesting and i'm not sure what it's referring to but i want to make a guess fix an issue that would see some cards target a specific card in hand deck rather than at random i'm wondering if that has to do with spider ham and if that's going to make spider ham stronger so this it might be a silent buff to spider ham which is a little frightening i'm not going to lie because sometimes he just continues to hit the same card all every single time even though it's like I've got like five cards in my hand that are all that value and it keeps hitting the same one. So I'm wondering if it has to do with that, but I don't know for certain. Uh, a Kang crash with Atlantis. Are anybody really playing Kang that often in these days? Not too much. I wish they'd buff them. Uh, unexpected third hand from Spider-Man variants. Never heard of it, but it's very interesting. Glad that they fixed it. Something with new users for three bonus ranks at living uh once hitting level 10 an issue where living tribunal would mishandle the power cap so that it would make something negative and cause a player to lose i've seen that before where it's just like it went over that cap and went into the negatives and makes it so that somebody loses was sort of crazy fix an issue causing the living tribunal effect before the card is revealed you can sometimes see the score which is sort of a bummer black bull always discard the leftmost card in the event that several cards of the same cost were targets so they fix that when an opponent's maria hill draws a card now correctly has uh, the proper card back some visual effects for nebula and then fix an issue with lockjaw overlapping with ongoing card and that's all they've got here so i think overall the patch notes are very interesting we'll see what happens with the spotlight caches another thing i want to throw in here uh, apparently there's a spreadsheet out here i put this out on twitter i was unable to take advantage of this because i wanted to see the game uh see what updates were in maybe i just need to be more i don't know something but i was unable to take advantage of this what this spreadsheet is showing is exactly where on the collection ladder you will get spotlight caches which means people are not updating their game and they're coming here and opening everything but what's shown on this spreadsheet right here so don't open these don't op don't upload your game or don't update your game and you can take advantage of the old system and getting all of the tokens and credits and gold without risking your spotlight caches i have to admit it feels bad it feels bad now because i didn't get to do it straight up i'm not gonna see her bs you about it and the simple thing was like well i'll just go look in game i'm not gonna think about this had i been a little bit more patient and waited could have taken advantage of it so like and subscribe so what do you think do you guys think this was a good update do you think it's fair that people were able to sit and get that spreadsheet and wait i think it was very smart on their part i'm actually just sad that i wasn't a part of it that's what happens when you just want to update and show people so if you want to help support the channel please consider hammering down that like button subscribing all that sort of thing share with your aunts uncles nieces nephews until next time i hope you have a wonderful day